So today what we're going to teach you is how to make a bulk um, batch of pie crust. And they're ones that you can just freeze ahead, pull out, use whenever you want to. It's fabulous. I like it better than the, uh, the store-bought ones that, that you get. They, they taste okay, but um, I don't know, I just, I far prefer this and knowing know what's what, in your food. Exactly. We know what's yes. going in. And yes. right now, it's coming up on the holiday seasons here mm -hmm. at the time that we're filming this video. So this is perfect. I think so. I need to do this. Yep. Okay. So, Emmeline, get ready for a workout. I am ready. Okay. <laughs> so what we're going to go ahead and start with is the flour. So this is five pounds of flour or 18.1 cups. Let's go ahead and dump all five pounds in there. And then you want to go ahead and do your salt. You're going to do two tablespoons of salt. And let me grab the pastry cutter. I like to sprinkle my salt around as I'm putting it in. That way it's easier to disperse later. Okay, and actually go ahead and mix that salt in while I'm putting mine on. So again, two tablespoons of salt. It's always amazing to me just how simple a pie crust really is, it is. you know, as far as what's in it. Everybody thinks it's so complicated and difficult, but it's really not. Right. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and mix mine while Emmeline, this is six pounds of shortening right here. If you really want to be decadent, get the uh, butter flavored shortening. That yes. tastes really good. But even the basic is, is good. So go ahead and take out, you're going to want to put half of that. Oh, you're going to need my spoon. Um, all right. You're going to need to put half of that in yours and we'll put half in mine because the recipe calls for three pounds of shortening. So here we go. You want to go ahead and start with that. And I'm going to have Emmeline cutting hers in with a pastry cutter. If you take a peek at this pastry cutter, you can see how it has all kinds of little tines. And pretty much what it does is it breaks up the shortening so that it can get coated in the flour. Because really when it comes to a pie crust, what you want is that flakiness. And the way you get that is by having little bitty beads of shortening throughout it so that you have the layers of shortening that are gonna, gonna melt and bake with the crust itself. I'm down to about the halfway point in the middle, but I gotta get my sides. Okay, perfect. And then I'll just take the rest. And you know, it's not a super picky recipe. So if you get a little too much or a, a little not enough shortening, it'll be fine. Okay. Now I'm going to be using a fork for, for a batch this size that is um, that can be quite the feat, but okay. I want you to see that you can actually use a fork if you don't have a pastry cutter. Look like about half. Yeah, I think, I think that's I pretty good. Right. Pretty close. Probably getting the shortening out is the worst part of this recipe. I really like to get my husband to help with this one because it's really nice to have a big strong guy willing to do all that hard labor there. Yeah. Family affair. That's right. He's fabulous about helping out with stuff. My husband is into more cooking than baking. Ah. He's really good at anything over the stove. My husband can whip up like none other. My husband's actually better at, at cooking than baking too. And I think it's just cause he doesn't like to follow recipes, <laughs> you know, that attention to detail and yeah. just understanding the way that different things work together is sometimes difficult for him, but he doesn't mind helping. I'm going to admit my husband follows the recipe better than I do. Oh, does he really? <laughs> I have a tendency to, oh, this is about right. <laughs> sure, which is okay for certain things, yeah, but exactly. not for others. It's kind of funny how we all have strengths and, and even in the, the cooking, our husbands will bring so much to the, the table. So oh yeah, speak. definitely. Okay, so now I've got all of my shortening in here, so I'm gonna start cutting mine in using my fork. And like I said, the important thing is to get all that shortening into small, generally they say pea-sized pieces. Crumbles. 
coated with the with the flour. And you really want a huge bowl for this. Even with that, it tends to be a bit on the messy side. Now this is going to make 10 different double crusted pie crusts. Which is fabulous. That is a lot. Which mm -hmm. is perfect to keep frozen in the freezer. Right, right. No, it's so great. If, if I want a really quick apple pie, I just can run out to the, to the um, pantry, grab my jar of apple pie filling. Which we've done a video on, so oh, it'll yeah. be right here, yes. the link. And, um, and then I pull this out of the freezer. It's better if you pull it out a little bit early so oh, that yeah. you don't have to defrost it. You can just right. let it thaw on the counter. Mm -hmm. As long as you think of it a little ahead of time, right. you know when you're gonna be baking. I figure if I think about it ahead of time, I make pie. If not, I make crisp. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Which we also have a video of. <laughs> so, how are you doing over there? I might looking great, but you want to go for the pastry cutter? Yeah, a bit? I do. I okay. I can keep working in with some of the crumbles. Okay. Yeah, I mean, really having the right tool for the job makes a huge difference. You can do it without, but it's going to take longer. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get your hands in there a bit more. Yeah, I think so. Get them in there coated. Not that that's a problem. Mine's looking pretty good. I yeah. have a couple little bigger chunks here, but we'll just smush them along the side. We'll push along some of the flour. Yeah. yeah, probably the biggest thing with a batch this size is it's really easy for um, pockets of flour to kind of hide at the edges mm -hmm. and underneath. That's why I like so you kind of bringing them in. into the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a minute ago I used that and I scooped down and up with it. Ah. I don't know if you saw that little technique that I was doing along the edge. Yeah, because that can make a big difference. Mm hmm. Okay, I think I am almost there. How about you? Yes, I'm there. Okay, so now we are at the last step, actually. It's really Super not simple. bad, yes. So what we have is three cups of cold water that you're gonna put in gradually. Probably the hardest thing about, about these recipes is that everything is just kind of gradual. You've got, to, you've got to do this step and then you've got to work a little bit more. So you work it in. When you feel like you've done a good job working that in, then you do some more. You don't want to overwork it because like I said, you want to have those pockets of, of butter. You don't want it to be mixed super well or of shortening, excuse me. So I can already it's see it to starting it to form, form up. Yeah. yeah so is mine. So Which now I it's really it hands it. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Now is really when you want to expose the uh, the more crumbly parts on the bottom. Bring them up to the top. Yep. Put your water on them. Because you, otherwise you're going to end up working that top part too much. Too much, and the bottom part's going to all be down there in the Still bottom. It'll be all powdery. Yep. Yeah. So work that in just a little bit. Let me kind of pour some of mine down there in the bottom. Yeah. Oh, I buried my fork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep burying mine too. Not a big deal though. Who would have known that all those years as a kid in the sandbox would pay off, right? Exactly. <laughs> Mud pits for my boys. Mud pits? <laughs> Is that oh, what they like? Yeah, their grandpa used to build them these metal tanks with scrap metal from the farm. And then they would take and put a hose in the, off to the side of the property <laughs> and just get out there in the summer with those tanks dirty, and boats. Huh? And, yeah, we call them mud pits. That's awesome. I wouldn't see the kids for hours other than going to check on them. I bet, I bet. <laughs> And of course they come in and say, come take a picture, mama, of our, of our city. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so I'm almost there. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm getting there. Yeah. Yeah. And you have one more round of water to add. Yep, I think really close. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and ditch my cutter and just use my hands because I feel like with my cutter, I'm not getting down to the bottom enough. And like I said, I really don't want to overdo it, but you don't want to not give it enough water either. Cause if you do, then it's going to crumble and it's going to be really hard to keep together. So there's kind of a fine line. I guess that's the difficult part about doing a pie crust really, not the ingredients or anything of that nature. Oh, it's doing marvelous. They both look fantastic. Right. I like to kind of, as I scoop things up and around to get down to those crumblies, I like to sometimes go down and squeeze them in there. Just kind of squeeze them through my fingers and then that will get them into a mix and then I can bring them back up to the top to mix in better. And I do it kind of like bread dough where it's almost like I'm rolling it in mm -hmm. to the center. If you can grab the crumbly pieces and put them on the top as you do that process, that's even better. And we didn't have to go to the gym this morning. Right, <laughs> right. It is a little bit more of a workout. Like I said, I usually like doing it when my husband's here. He's fabulous. Cinnamon rolls are a great thing to have guys around for too. Yes. My my teen boys love to help make cinnamon rolls. Uh -huh. I'm trying to teach my teen boys, you know, a little more in the kitchen. Right. My That's husband's good. really good and his mother taught him. And so I feel like it would be really good to teach my boys that as well. My brothers didn't learn quite as much until their wives until really they got experienced them. Huh? Uh -huh. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do for mine. So if you take a look, Mine is pretty doughy still. There's still some chunks, but I just don't want to overwork it. So I'm going to stop at that point. Yeah, okay. mine's pretty good too. I have like a couple little chunks here on the bottom that probably need to get pushed in Just there. put in the middle, sure. Okay, so at that point, what you're going to do is just break it up into 10 different pieces. Sometimes I'll use the spoon or the fork like Emmeline is doing. First thing I do is just break it in half. And then I break that into the five pieces and I just kind of roll them into a ball. I'm just gonna show you one because I don't want the video to get over long. Okay. size-wise. Mine's a little small. And then I'm gonna go ahead. Can you get it? Yeah. We'll do a double dip. So we've got this in a big bulk. All right. Move my bowl over. So this is our plastic wrap. And what I'm gonna do with the plastic wrap, here let me set this to the side is you go ahead and pull out a nice long chunk. I like getting the Costco plastic wrap because mm -hmm. yes. you get plenty. And then I just roll it all the way up, tuck in the edges. Sorry, we mm. got an angle here. I guess I could have turned it around and I would have been better off. Oh, that's all right. And then I'm gonna do another one. And I'm gonna fold it up the other direction, the sideways direction that I did the other one. And so now you have it double plastic wrapped and then I'm gonna put it inside a freezer bag. Now, if you really wanted to keep it fresh for longer, you could um, go ahead and vacuum seal it in a bag. But even just having it in a freezer bag, it should last at, at least three to six months possibly longer. Um, this just makes it super easy to not only make your sweet pies, but also to go and make like uh, chicken, pot, chicken pie. pot pie. My kids really love that yeah. one. 
and this takes a huge step out of the process and to have oh. done so many at a time just can really make a difference in convenience exactly so if you guys have any questions go ahead and uh, send us a message